I want this lyric on your album from Nip. So I'll probably die on these streets, but I'll live through my name. Yeah. That's a prophecy. Of yeah. course it is. Yeah. Um, yes. <clears throat> Not to cut you off. Please. Him saying that that night, mm -hmm. me hearing his verse saying that, is sound like if I die tonight from Tupac. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that is mm -hmm. unless somebody actually perishes. Mm -hmm. Going back to hear it after Nip passed, I did when he when when I first heard the news that he passed, even weeks after, I still hadn't hadn't thought about mm -hmm. what he said on the album. That mm -hmm. was not the vein I was in. I mm -hmm. was missing my friend, and I was still in shock that um, Tupac happened while I was coexisting in hip hop mm -hmm. with Tupac, which Nip, I felt like Nip was somebody cut off way too early that had the that nigga Nip had your knowledge. Mm -hmm. But he didn't give it in music. He gave the streets, mm -hmm. and but he was that was his first album. Yeah, if Nip had Nip nine albums like crazy. Game, you would have heard Black Thought or Talib or Most Def speaking through Nip, and mm -hmm. and so his albums are in his interviews. If you want to hear, right. if you want to hear a classic Nipsey album, compile twelve interviews, mm -hmm. put them together and listen to him. Man, he was so fucking be like, yeah, so far ahead of even myself intellectually mm -hmm. he liked to read you know what i'm saying he, he used to tell me like game you read that book he was like cuz they got ebooks right yes. like my nigga i ain't i don't know about no ebook right. if it ain't got no pictures in that motherfucker <laughs> like i ain't reading right. it and i'm not like an avid reader like he was always pushing that shit and um for him to be taken that early man it's such a travesty mm -hmm. man because i know what a nine album or or mm -hmm. a ten year later Nipsey would have done right. for hip hop as a culture. You started to see him in suits. Yeah. You started to see him transition to having Rock Nation brunches and mm -hmm. him standing next to Meek Mill, Yo Gotti, Jay Z, yeah. and you know, and and all those guys. You started to see him do things that I haven't even done yet, right. and that means that intellectually, you know, in hip hop as for and, and selfishly, mm -hmm. I mean unselfishly, he was ready to give mm -hmm. knowledge and anything else he could. He didn't give a fuck about being rich or none mm -hmm. of that. He just was collecting what was owed to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when he dropped Victory Lap and I, and I posted it and he called me and he was like, man, you are right. everything is wow. a brother to me. Right. Everything. He was like, I got all these little, you know, everybody posted. But when I saw yours, it took me back to that first day right. I met you. You know right. what I'm saying? So tell us about that day. The day I met Nip? Yeah. Um... This shit is crazy because like it, it 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 it'll take you back into the mind of like a fucking twenty eight year old game or some shit, and L A and like what I was on at that time. So if you live if you've been in L A long enough, you've been here six years, you've been here a yeah. long fucking time. You know that our freeways run uh, one ten one hundred five four hundred five one hundred one. It's a square. Mm -hmm. Um. I would, I'm from Compton, so anytime I'm coming from Compton, I get on a 105, just not because I don't know, well, I, number one, I didn't know a quicker way to get to mm -hmm. Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Really, I could have just went to the 110 and the 10, to the 101, but when you're young and you only know, you know, you know, you got no sense of direction, mm -hmm. like a motherfucker, um, I took the 105 and I got off on Crenshaw. Reason I got off on Crenshaw, because there are bitches on Crenshaw. <laughs> it's over by me. Up and down. <laughs> not only are there bitches on Crenshaw? This is the street in Boys in the Hood where like niggas had the confrontation. Mm -hmm. This is the street where on Sunday nights throughout my whole childhood, my dad, my uncles, my brothers would come, park the Impala, mm -hmm. get out and people would congregate. It's Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. I had a white Range Rover. I'm 28. At this time, like I'm Doctor's Advocate is out. Mm -hmm. I'm two albums in. I'm not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. I want to get off the freeway, see some bitches, smoke some weed, Maybe find a problem. I got a Glock on my lap. Maybe <laughs> if niggas is tripping, mm -hmm. I want I want my whole L.A. hip hop rapper nigga experience. Mm -hmm. So I would get off on Crenshaw, take Crenshaw all the way down to Wilshire, make a fucking left on Wilshire, make a right on La Cienega, make a right on Melrose just to go get my car wash at the car wash mm -hmm. back where I sold my CDs uh. to get at even more bitches <laughs> and show off this Range Rover. Young, dumb nigga shit. Mm -hmm. But that's what I wanted to do. He was the baby. Exactly. You gotta show up the range. Exactly. Over. So this this day, mm -hmm. it was my point to not get stopped at any red lights in Crip Hoods mm -hmm. while I was rolling, mm -hmm. at all. For some reason, I feel like the lights get longer when mm -hmm. you get stopped at them motherfuckers. They never turn green, and they just want you to just like death. Yeah. I feel like it's a nigga controlling the lights. They just be like, <laughs> die. There you go, kill this nigga. <laughs> 
So it it was like a Honda Civic and a fucking gray like uh, a, a Harley truck in mm -hmm. front of me. And these niggas did not go through this yellow, bro. They stopped. Mm -hmm. And when they stopped, I said, this is crazy. Crenshaw Wait, but Slauson. you got to tell them that people go through the yellows in LA. So oh, people know. go through the yellows till it's red. Like, mm -hmm. motherfuckers just keep on going. So I'm like, why does this nigga stop? Mm -hmm. I couldn't go around because there was a car coming up from the back. So I'm stuck at this light. Who on the corner? 1560s Crips. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't fuck with these scenarios. This is what I did not want to happen. Mm -hmm. And this, you, you want to ride through LA and you want to just coast through smooth with no motherfucking problems. Mm -hmm. 15 young ass crips on the corner and these niggas are crossing the street. For what reason, God, I don't even fucking know, but they're coming straight at my car. Oh, niggas no. went from crossing the crosswalk, this is my car. Niggas went from crossing the crosswalk that goes this way. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I'm right here behind two other cars. Them niggas turned. And then when they turned, they started getting close and right when Nip got right where you are, the nigga whipped out a CD. I was like, oh my God. Thank God. <laughs> a nigga with a demo. Right. <laughs> Nip pulled it out. I rolled my window down, uh -huh. and Nip is tall. Nip was like six three. Mm -hmm. So Nip looked in the car, and he saw I had a Glock on my lap. The nigga's like, I, I can see in his eyes that he said to himself, "Game a real nigga." Like mm -hmm. he out here. He was like, "Hey, cub, my name Nip, and um, the, we the Slauson boys." Almost like if I met Run DMC. The right. niggas, you could really see in these three. It was Rempaw, J Stone, mm -hmm. and Nipsey, and you could see in them niggas' eyes that they really thought they was the shit for some, whatever mm -hmm. the fuck reason, wow. these niggas had confidence on 100. I don't care mm -hmm. if they was just, if it just mattered in they hood, you could see the confidence in Nip. I took the CD and then uh, he, he was like, nigga, you a real one, cuz. I put the CD in my car and then I, I caught him. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, Nip, mm -hmm. you got a number on here? He was like, it's on the back, cuz. Confidence though, mm -hmm. not like, you know. Right, not being like, No, the mm -hmm. nigga just turned around. He didn't even come back to the car. And then he turned around, he's like, it's on the back, cuz. I was like, it ends on the back, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I took the CD, I put it in, and I'm like, man, this nigga sound like like a breath, like a fucking lyrical like Snoop. Not yeah. sound like Snoop, but and then I just seen the nigga, he looked like Snoop. Yeah. Right, right. So that's the first thing I saw. I was like, man, this nigga look like Snoop. And I told Snoop, I said, Snoop, I met a nigga that looked like you. <laughs> like, I called Snoop. Right. And Snoop was like, was that nigga named Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle? Hussle. Wow. <laughs> and he was like, cuz everywhere. <laughs> so I'm like, I took the CD. Mm -hmm. And um, later on that night, I called the number. I'm like, you know, come to the studio. Um, Wack brought him to the studio mm -hmm. with Big U and Steve Lobel. Mm -hmm. That's how I met Wack. Or no, that's not how I met Wack. The second time I met Wack. I'll tell you that story in a minute. Um, but he came to the studio and we did They Roll. Mm -hmm. And we did like two other songs and They Roll ended up being on, you know, uh, Nipsey shit. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's so how wait. I met Nip. But okay, so you're in the car and you got all of these crips coming up to you. So what's going on in your mind right now? I was scared now? of shit and ready to bust, for sure. Like yeah. you were just about to go off. For like, sure. Now oh. I had my gun on my lap and my, my finger was on the trigger and I said, if I see any nigga reach, I'm shooting everybody at this motherfucking light. I don't give a fuck because I'm with all the LA bullshit, especially ball head with, with 7X t-shirts on. Ball head game was stupid. <laughs> That's I, a different nigga. It's a good thing that he wasn't the cops because if he was the cops, they would have been done if he pulled right. the CD. Yeah, exactly.